you've been with us for how many calling now you are with me for say so I'll be there I'll be there forever I like, I like the committee every third sunday our parents would always bring us to Kerala have full up known our games and stuff and if i do a journey of probably 500 kilometers and i need sleep and i'm tired that's on a horseback <laughs> most people thought i won't survive and the days they don't know the true true power which is behind such a 10 million earth buddies if you get I'll give you <laughs> okay uh, i told samantha 25 million come on do this sir <laughs> samantha can afford to have 25 million <laughs> Namaskaram, Namaskaram Sri Devi. Wonderful Namaskaram. seeing you. So so happy to be here. Thank you for this opportunity. I'm so grateful to be here. So you've been with us for how many calling? Now you're with me for safe soil. Fantastic. Sir. I'll be there forever. I like, I like the commitment. Yes, I'll be there forever. I'll be following you like millions others. Andre Kannadal Mathar Baka English Sir Mathar Mathar. Then get it okay. You gain with me Kannadal Mathar. Also Kannada English. Yeah. Okay. Done. Sadhguru, so you've been you're you're in Mysore, and I know that you grew up here. How did this place change since last 30 40 years? Now that you see this place, <laughs> what do you think? You know like when we were children, every 3rd Sunday, mm. our parents would always bring us to Kerala. At that time there was no the separate road we had to come on the dam. Okay. We were so excited about <laughs> that. Red light will come, you can't go. Green light will come, you can go. Those days we had not seen this thing that the road will yeah, be yeah. controlled like this. Traffic. So We used to come every uh, third Sunday, and as we became twelve, thirteen years of age, it became once in two months. Then it kind of receded, and as we grew up, you know, we went our own ways. But later on, uh, you know, me, my wife, and Radhe, when she was young, we used to come very often. But I wouldn't come in the evening because I don't like this very touristy kind of setup. So I would come in the daytime, the other side. Where the Vishweshwaraya Canal is there, and there is lot of fruit trees and stuff. So we used to come there with a small group and play frisbee and have full afternoon of games and stuff, and then go back <laughs> before this whole tourist caravan came. But when we when we were children, these things were this whole garden was lit up with regular bulbs, garish lighting, red, blue, green, and all that. I don't think it's it's yet there. What the memories that you have of? No, after that I remember I don't know which year the Philips took the what do you say the contract for uh, relighting it, and they did it in a very subtle way, which was actually nice. The people of Mysore didn't like it. Oh, this is they not care. This is not care as the care should be like that and all. But I think it's still when they did that only that uh, dancing fountain or dynamic fountain came up. But even now, the lighting is a little subtler. Little, looking like it's not lit up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's a bit too subtle, I would say, because fountains are not being seen at that time. Fountains would be brightly lit. Glowing up. Yeah. And I remember this, seeing the old pictures. This green mantapam would be fully green. You know. Yeah, yeah. Fully green means like how the palace is lit. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, that yeah. green mantapam sitting there. It's all green. Yeah. Now they painted it green and it's not looking like that. So low the light. The city is almost same, I, I believe. Mm -hmm. The Mysore city is all same, I believe almost. No, it's changed a lot, but still it has that little quaintness, unlike Bangalore. Okay. Uh, I hope it retains that. Till now there's a six lane road to Bangalore. If you want a big city, you can always be there in an hour. In an hour. <laughs> so I hope Mysore retains its uh, its city of palaces and gardens kind of. Uh, image. Yeah, the opposite. It was very beautiful. So you're here at the end of thirty thousand kilometers and going strong. Whereas I, if I do a journey of probably five hundred kilometers and I need sleep and I'm tired. And what? <laughs> On a horseback? <laughs> so I, that's what I was coming to. That you put all the youngsters to shame. How do you do this, Sadhguru? I know everybody asks you this, but I have to ask this one common question: How do you do this? I've been telling you, you must do inner engineering. All right? That's the answer. Yep, it is. Because see, any machine, for example, anything, any mechanism, if it's well engineered, it will function with least amount of friction. Essentially, good engineering means you take away the friction. Good action, whatever activity it performs, is almost seamless and effortless. This is also a very complex mechanism. 
human mechanism is a very complex mechanism. The important thing is that you take away all the friction. If there is friction within you, what it means is, you yourself are an issue in your life. Then how will you handle other issues <laughs> when you are an issue yourself? This one thing you must decide in your life. We will face many issues in life, the more active you are, the more issues you will face, that's okay. But you should never be an issue in your life. You can be issue in somebody else's life. I'll give you the freedom. <laughs> in your life, you shouldn't be the problem, isn't it? Then what is it? That's the dumbest thing to do. But for most people, their own thoughts, their own emotions are a big, big issue. They don't need anybody else, they don't need enemies, most of them are doing great by themselves. Self-cost. <laughs> I know. So, yeah, I think in an engineering uh, This machine runs smooth, so it runs easy. No friction, frictionless. Most people thought I won't survive hundred days and thirty thousand kilometers. Here I am, just another two hundred fifty kilometers, I'm there. They, they don't know the true, <laughs> true power behind Sadhguru, so yeah, now they're aware of that. Um, so I hope when I'm at your, you know, I write like this when I'm at your age. But how different, what different did you do? I've already you? promised uh, Nobody will do it? that girl, Samantha. I have promised an huh. Indonesian girl, huh. she's a very famous actor. Okay. And uh, what is the promise? I'm very curious. I told her, see, if you get ten million uh, earth buddies, okay. I'll you'll get to ride with me. So she just flew to Dubai. I was in Dubai and said, okay. Sadhguru, I've come to ride with you. I've done, I've done enough number of uh, earth buddies. I'll ride with you. Okay. So Did I she was, do ten million? I, uh, I don't know. I don't count. When she says she's done, I don't know. <laughs> so. Then uh, I was at the, the you know, UAE uh, agro farm, they have a farm, I was So she came there, she said, I bought a new helmet and she had safe soil sticker on it. Wow. I said, all right, are you really ready because the temperatures were soaring. Uh, on that day on road, the temperatures were around 52 to 50. So she sat in my back seat and I rode. Like, uh, you know, there the speed limit is 160. So I was hitting 160 okay. and she's like in 15 minutes, Sadhguru, Sadhguru, <laughs> please I love you, Sadhguru, stop <laughs> Oh my god, but she got to sit there for 15 minutes. She got the… she was privileged, but she was tired of it, she was like done. And you, too far. And you usually ride at that speed or more? I, I don't tell you those things. This is the only time I connect in my life. Speed. Oh my gosh, how many But in Germany it was not a crime, so okay. I can tell you. Okay. okay. So, <laughs> I'm sure it's above 160. My motorcycle is capped at 275, digitally, uh, electronically capped. If we release that, it'll do probably 330, 340. Right now it's capped at 275. Okay, good. And the, then the vehicles that follow you, they can catch up to you or I, I don't think they can catch up to you ever? Somewhere. <laughs> okay, okay. I think then I need to aim at getting 10 million. 10 million earth buddies if you get. I can come and strike, right? That I need a ride? Yes. Uh, okay. You will okay. get a ride. You don't have to strike. I'll give you a ride. <laughs> okay, done, done. Noted. <laughs> so I'm going to do that. Uh, I told Samantha 25 million. <laughs> Are you not ashamed you're taking only 10 million? Come on. <laughs> don't do this, Sadhguru. <laughs> Samantha can afford to have 25 million. Right now I can't afford to have 25. So, all right, ten million. Okay, ten million. Done, done. Okay. <laughs> so sweet, you gave me ten million. Let's be a secret. Don't do this to anybody else. Just be ten million. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, I wanted to ask that what different you did when you were young. So that, I mean, you had your childhood and when you were growing up. But now you're like this. What was the different thing that you did? And probably we could also do it now, growing up. One important thing I think I did was. I never identified myself with anything. I was involved with everything – family, religion, politics, I was very involved. But never identified with it – school, education, especially education <laughs> <laughs> But when you say you don't identify yourself, means you're not… See, the moment you identify, you get prejudiced. See, right now, nationality, for example, or religion, you get identified with that. Suddenly you prejudice everything that's yours look good, everything that somebody else's doesn't look good. So that's one thing I did that I never identified with anything. I simply looked at everything the way it is. 
So, if you see things the way they are, it's very effortless to navigate through life. Right now the problem is, people get strongly identified and because of that they have strong opinions. You call it an opinion, I call it a prejudice. See, you have an opinion about what I am. This is a prejudice, I could be anything tomorrow morning different from what you're thinking, right? So, the moment you form opinions, you'll be prejudiced. Right now people are acting like it's their right to have their strong opinions. I have my own opinion. Now the so-called uh, whatever the civilized people, what they do is, I agree with your opinion, you agree with my opinion. So I scratch your back, you scratch my back, we'll go on without any problem. No. This is rubbish. Yeah. At least if you fight about your opinion because you believe that's right, I would appreciate that. This is your opinion. Yeah, I'll, ap I, I'll take yours, you'll take mine. Okay, both of us, both idiots get along. It's very hard for people to understand. People who are around me for more than twenty-five, thirty years, even today when I look at them, I don't have an opinion about them. I just look at them how they stand right now. See them for what they are today. Because what they were for last twenty-five years, today they need not be that. That's why the human being is important because it's always a possibility. You know, like uh, for example, we started these programs, our people wanted to do HR programs, that means human resource. I said human is not a resource, human is a possibility. So we'll call it human possibility, not a resource. Resource means we know the quantity, we know the qualities of that. We take, uh, uh, let's say, sand or iron ore or uh, steel or something, we know the quality of that. We know what is what it is and we know what we can do and what we cannot do. A human being is not like that, it's not a resource. It is a possibility, if you nurture a human being properly, people will do things that you never imagined possible, never imagined possible. See, even this, uh, you know, hundred day journey, when I announced this on third of January, people thought it's impossible. I said, you just do it, it's okay, it'll happen. And then some people who don't trust this, they went about inquiring with professional agencies, who can organize a tour like this, who can take care of this, who can take care of the logistics. Everybody looked at the mad schedule and they said, no, we can't do this, seamlessly. Across twenty-seven nations, these eight states non-stop, without a single day of contingency, there's no contingency plan, either for the man or the machine. They planned this in such a way, one day if the machine is not working or if the man is not well, there is no contingency, simply hundred days packed. See, when it comes to body, that's your body, this is my body. One day when we are buried, we will understand that is also not true. But at least for now, that is your body, this is my body. This is my mind, that's your mind. But there is no such thing as this is my life and that's your life. It's a living cosmos. You have captured a little bit of life, I have captured a little bit of life. How much life you capture within you will determine how significant your presence will be, your experience will be. This is what we are trying to bring into people's life within our engineering and various aspects of yoga is so that as a life you are enhanced, not as a mind, not as a person, but as a life you are an enhanced life. That means if you sit here simply by yourself, still your experience of life is significant. Right now for most human beings, they have to do something to become significant. Without doing anything, you're very significant. Then action becomes effortless, there is no stress about what will happen, what will not happen, because anyway your existence is very significant. This needs to happen to every human being. This is why Safe Soil is under the banner of conscious planet. Everybody to think twice why it's called conscious land because we're living so unconsciously right now. So, talking about you, I mean, you know, the day that we are living. Talking about me. Okay, yeah, I yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're the leader of the gang. You're the leader of the gang. Come on, Sadhguru. So, but yeah, the question that I'm asking that doesn't include you because we are fools and I want an answer for that. We have heard you telling that, you know, if youth is not nurtured well, it can be disastrous. India being young country where if youth are on the right track, you know, it could do wonders. Whereas I feel most of the youth, we are always in this state of confusion, no clarity, there is no focus. How do we get the change that have that focus that when you want to do something, you do it, you don't, you don't leave it? See, uh, can you read this board? Yes, Royal… No, no, Royal. read by alphabet. R-O-Y-A-L. 
O R C H I D. Oh, you know all the alphabets. Sadguru. No, no. ट Sadhguru, what is the takeaway? Give it to me in two minutes. That means people are not giving enough significance to their life. If your life is significant, is it not important for the well-being of your life to invest a certain amount of time? Now I am telling you, you invest thirty to thirty-two hours of time. We'll teach you something with which your chemistry will become blissful. If you simply stand here, you're blissed out. Now, once you're joyful by your own nature, you're not an issue, isn't it? Right now, your own issues are going on all the time. Life has many issues. The more activity you are doing, there are more issues about it. But you are not the issue. If this has to happen, you must be joyful by your own nature. For this, there are many ways to approach it. The simple thing is, if your chemistry becomes joyful, you will be joyful, isn't it? People are trying, attempting this with a bottle or a pill or something. Well, it works for a little bit of time and then Very you know, time. then you know what all happens to them after that. So, there is another way because this is the greatest chemical factory in the universe that we know. Most complex and sophisticated chemical factories here. If you are a good manager of this factory, would you create blissful chemistry or miserable chemistry? Yes, you yeah. If you're a lousy manager, then you create miseries, tensions and confusions. So this is all it is. If you bring… This your, Yes, without taking care of it, without paying enough attention to this, without doing the necessary work with it, you touch the world. Even if you touch it with best intentions, you'll only cause harm. Right now that's what has happened to the soil. That's what has happened to the soil. Soil has not been destroyed because there is some evil force sitting somewhere wanting to destroy this planet in pursuit of human happiness and well-being. Henry, Canada, ne matar lima. Na no. Ni vela English ele matar dilu. Ila ila. Na tumbo Canada ne matar dilu. Yelder gotak be kalwa, artak be kalwa. Arey English ele matar dilu. Un Canada dal kelti. Okay na. Nangu niece ne kiu dare maklu. Ella city ele bede kudare. Most of the youth in urban setups, village bolu kala urban setups. They would not even remember. Or, when I put it all, last time barefoot, manual, I was calling it. There, I tell you, city concrete jungle, there, 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 I have been talking about this in various different ways, now that you asked the question. See, the way the lifestyle change that's happened, there are many aspects to it. One is not being in touch with any aspect of nature, not being in touch with any of the five elements except for consumption. There is no contact with water, fresh air, fire, anything, okay? You… most people have never sat around a fire. Because there is no connection with any of the five elements, that is one aspect. Another aspect is today, if they are living in big cities like Bangalore, Mumbai, wherever else, most of the Indian cities, I would say, if they step out of their home, they are straight into the traffic. They don't have the very… this thing about simply running out of your home like a butterfly and hopping all over the place and nothing hits you. They always became, become concerned and conscious, Cautious. yes. But this, in another fifteen, twenty years, will pay a huge price. The number of people with psychological ailments will go up in a very massive way. One thing is lack of contact with five elements, another is lack of carefree living when they are young. So we need to change this as a part of this. I'm part of this what is called as future cities. So I am suggesting a one-building city. Oh. 
Someday when you have the time, I'll explain to it. Yeah. You and maybe you can do a project, one building city oh. around Bangalore. Okay. See, right. if you go fifty kilometers outside the city, the real estate costs are probably ten percent or less. Yes, yes. All right? So you buy fifty acres. Hmm. You build only one acre, hmm. fifty floors or more, up to hundred floors you can build whatever you want. Oh. Residences, offices, a small school up till seven standard, a small theater to watch your movies, Okay, uh, see, uh, I'm making accommodation for everyone. I'm loving it, Sadhguru. I'm loving it. Uh, <laughs> a really. little sports I'm center. I'm very actually uh, calculating this plan, really. <laughs> 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 little sports center, a gymnasium, whatever people need, everything in the building. Okay. Remaining forty-nine acres, absolutely no building. Okay, at the most you can build some gazebos and mantapams like that where people can sit. Okay. But no construction, okay. no enclosed construction. Rest you just make it like a forest have water bodies and this, whatever this care is. If not manicured like this, simply you can have it like this, not like this but full of trees, where children will grow up very healthy. One aspect of life is children, right? Whether we individually want to have children or not, the future of the world is that generation. If they grow up sick very early, sick because you remove them, from the source of life. They never swam in a river, I can't believe most of them have never swam in a river. You know, I must tell you because you come from Mangalore, Netravati. I'm at that time made like this that uh, if I see water, I just jump into it. If I see a hill, I have to climb it. I'm like that. So I'm riding on a motorcycle, my wife is new, she's just married just for three months or so, so she's riding with me. I come and Netravati bridge was new at that time, okay. it's a more than a kilometer long uh -huh. bridge. You know. So I park there and I unbutton my shirt, put it there, I take off my trousers in my underpants, I just jump off the… She must have been shocked. <laughs> I just jump off the bridge, okay. maybe about forty feet, forty-five feet, something like that. I'm scared, eh? Uh, what if you hit some rock or something? No, no, I… I'm not that stupid, I can see the depth. <laughs> Okay. And I jump where the bridge wall is, you know, where the wall is, okay. the water is coming up almost five, six feet more because it hits the wall and coming up, I go right there. Okay, okay. So I got extra five, six feet buffer. buffer yeah. So I jump and uh, then, uh, you know, anyway, because the river is flowing this way, I go through the bridge, come out, swim out there and come back. So I… almost twenty-five, thirty minutes, when I come back, a huge crowd has gathered. This girl is standing there, crying her heart out because she is looking on the other side. <laughs> he said, where did you go, what did you do and all? I said, you fool, why are you looking this side? If I fall this side, the river is flowing that side, I will come there, you know. She is looking here and crying that I drowned. <laughs> My God, I can't blame her. Anybody would have cried, Sadhguru. <laughs> Suddenly out of if the If she had come this way, she would have seen me At least swimming. swimming. <laughs> <laughs> but you, after, after forty minutes? Fifty minutes of… About twenty-five, thirty minutes because I had to swim out, come to that shore and walk back. <laughs> so yeah, that that is lacking these days, these kids and They don't have to do those kind of at things. Least, at least… Touch dip, the mud or… At least a dip in the river has not happened in your life means what a sad story you are. And I traveled across India where I never stayed in hotels, I always camped next to a small stream or somewhere, I parked there with my motorcycle and sh washed myself there and you know, get around that and being in nature, what it does to you, cannot be described, just cannot be described. The… I, for weeks on end, I've been in Western Ghats trekking and in Gopal Swami Betta, these regions. Once I was out there for nearly twenty-three days, like no equipment those days except my HMT watch. You know what's a HMT? Mm, I know. You know HMT? I don't know. The belt is old fashioned, see? Yeah. So, HMT watch is the only equipment I have. There are no phones, there is no other equipment, I don't even have a torchlight. The matchbox that I carry by second day, it's all wet and gone. Twenty-three days. <laughs> I… by about eighth or ninth day, something like that, my shirt, half of my shirt is gone because when I was getting off the tree, it went off. So, I always slept on the trees and in the daytime I looked for food and walked around. I walked hundred and sixty-three kilometers, I think, for twenty-three days through the jungle. I saw all kinds of animals, tigers, elephants, bison, there are lots of them. So, alone by myself, finding my own food, because my food ran out on third, fourth day. 
that's all you can carry. No light, no matchbox, no nothing. When you're cold, you're cold, when you're hot, you're hot and you walk through everything. I'm saying what it does to you, both physically and mentally. If you don't do those things at all, not at all exposed, everybody need not go alone and risk their life. Even in some organized way, they can do something, at least come to care and walk around <laughs> Something. You need contact with nature because, see who you are right now is a consequence of what's happening in these fifteen to eighteen inches. These organisms, these microorganisms are like miniature human beings. See, the fantastic thing is, there is one super microorganism, exact replica, there will be a little larger one, exact replica, ra larger one. Till now, people have seen fifteen to seventeen like this. There could be many more. That is super, super micro organism, becomes little more micro, micro, still microscopic only. Yeah. But fifteen layers of the same design. Larger than each. Yes, species. larger than each species. There yeah. are different species. Like this, there are a trillion species. <laughs> that is what makes us. Even now, your body itself is sixty percent microbial life, only forty percent is parental genetics. And we don't I... get it. We still think we yeah, are yeah. parents' kids. <laughs> The parents think <laughs> you are their kids. Parents think they are kids, yeah, yeah, very true. I was telling you, I was in Sofia and this little girl, eight-year-old girl comes and says, Sadhguru, I want to do shelf soil, but my mother, bo 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 no. I said, you tell your mother she's only twenty percent. <laughs> <laughs> she's not going to like it. <laughs> she's not going to like it, but that's the truth. <laughs> that's the truth about yeah. it. So, so we read these facts and these doomsday predictions. You know facts and all these predictions and if we don't, do what we should do, in the next 30-40 years it will be disastrous and all, all that. Um, whereas even the youth, we understand it and we are worried also to some extent. But how we can get that attitude change that not just worry or understand it, act upon it, do something about it. So that attitude change, that not just being worried and understanding about the issues. The one problem everywhere but particularly in India is People are always asking, Sadhguru, what will happen after that year? What will happen after hundred years? So essentially what they are looking for is, they want a prediction, what will happen. Prediction means something is predetermined. Except your foolishness, nothing else is predetermined. <laughs> so, I always ask them, do you want a prediction or do you want a plan? If you are incompetent to make a plan and to execute a plan, then you look for prediction. But what should happen on this planet, you will look at every other planet and every other star. All the stars you're looking at, most of them actually don't exist, do you know this? Yeah. They are gone long time ago. Okay, yeah. If the light is coming to a still, so they're, they're, there. they're gone. So, you are looking at other things instead of looking here and seeing if they're looking at the next step, you are thinking of something else which you can't fix. So, it's a prediction. If you look at how can we do this, if there is a plan, maybe not a perfect plan, at least you have a reasonably good plan, we can always improve the plan and work on it, things will turn around. So, never ask for a prediction about anything, whether it's your personal life or the general situation in the world. What is the plan? Well, everything that you plan may not happen. But if your commitment is relentless, you can make it happen largely. A few things may not happen, but it's okay. Everything that we plan need not happen. So everything that we plan need not happen, absolutely. It is just that if as you bring more clarity to what you see, then you see most of the things that you plan will become real because you have seen it clearly. That is, see, if this is my issue all the time in my life for people around me, I start talking about something that is not tomorrow, that is day after tomorrow, I start acting on it right now, preparing the situation. It doesn't make any logical sense to anybody because it doesn't even seem relevant. But I'm preparing a nut and bolt for day after tomorrow to fix it. They at the most are seeing smelling tomorrow, they can't understand that day after tomorrow can be fixed now. 
So always people are either in confusion or they get angry or resentful because they think, oh, what is he doing? It doesn't make any sense. But after it happens, they say, oh, this is fantastic. Now it's fine. Now the dots, yeah. <laughs> we're connecting the dots. So that's why when something very big is being planned for… in my mind, I never tell anybody. Because if you tell them everything, they will get mind boggled. Yeah, yeah. They'll get the… you know, incapacitated. Yeah. All this is going to happen. It's better to do one by one, step yes. by step. You tell them the next step, they're happy. Yeah. You tell them the next step, they're happy. Yeah. You tell them what is after twenty-five steps, they'll go crazy. Yeah, yeah I think that, that's okay. For the minds like us, I think… Taking it each step is better than <laughs> getting confused with the whole plan. <laughs> this is why one needs to work on their clarity, yeah. that you learn to see things very clearly. That's the problem with the you, like us, including all of us. This is why I said what I said there. See, if you're not identified with anything, you will become more and more clear. See, right now, let's say for example, you're a young woman. Mm. You get very identified with your gender. Now you can't see life the way it is. You go on thinking this is it, that is it because you are identified with a certain body form which is a woman's body. Now you can't see life as it is. If you… yes, you are a woman, hundred percent, there's no good thing about that. But if you are not identified with it, you can see both sides of everything which will give you clarity of life. Otherwise, it will just give you strong emotions. You will not see beyond… Yes, it will give you strong emotions which will throw you around here and there. It looks like it's a great thing, especially because you're in the movies, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm no, not no, making comments. Because these television, television series, I don't see them, yeah. but here and there, whatever, when I'm sitting news channels at least, whatever sometimes yeah. flashes, everywhere it's become like this, that how do we settle the difference between you and me? Let's say we have a difference of opinion. Mm. You think that is blue, but I'm telling you it's green, no, you insist it's blue. How do you settle this? Lash your face up or cut your throat off. Mm. This is how we are encouraging you. If you and me cannot agree, the way to settle it if you are a real hero is bash your face or chop your head off or shoot you in the head or something like this. Whether it is Western movies or Indian movies, everything is like that. Now worse is the video games have come. Five-year-old kids are shooting, 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 shooting somebody. So tomorrow, suppose I get a gun in my hand, if I have to press this trigger, I don't feel too much about your life because I've been shooting right from age… Uh, you know, age of five. On the screen I've been shooting, when I become eighteen, twenty, I would like to get a little real. This is happening. You see in America all the time. So we need to look at these things. How… what kind of society do we want to build? I said this and nobody liked it, but let me say it to you, maybe not so much in South Indian movies, but in Hindi movies during seventies and early eighties, there used to be a few people who were called rape experts. Yeah. Vivid rapes, you know, like very, very violent kind of rapes being shown on the screen, two, three people were rape experts. So all the very young people who watched those rape experts, Today, if they do those things in the world, suddenly it looks so bad. But you are coaching them, this is the way to treat a woman, right? In a way you are nurturing it or not. So, if you are going on the street, I will come and pull your hair. That is… that was called heroic, romantic, isn't it? Being done or not? I will come on the bicycle and tug your hair. And if you fall down, I say, <laughs> and sing a song. That was great. So I'm not saying you, the cinema has a responsibility of fixing everything in a society. No, I would not say that. After all, it's entertainment, you can do it whichever way. But some sense of what are we doing to people who watch this? Because people who watch this are so simple-minded that they see you in the cinema and they think this is for real. Yeah. They're not seeing it as just the two-hour cinema entertainment and going home. Their heads are revved up with this and they think this is for real. So when that kind of population is what is what's in cinema, I think little more responsibility we must look. At the same time, I wouldn't put the burden of fixing everything in the society through cinema. It is just entertainment, little bit of art, little bit of commerce, little bit of entertainment. It's okay the way you make it. 
but little more consciousness about it. See, right now they brought a law, you can't show a hero smoking. All the old movies, everybody was smoking. Well, it's a responsible thing, but you are showing criminals and all kinds of people, how come they don't smoke? Non-smoking criminal is <laughs> a little <laughs> By default, they'll assume they, they will do. No, I'm saying it would be natural for him to smoke. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But we are not showing that. Yeah. So I don't want… we don't need laws like that. By self-control, we must see what is the impact we are having on other people. Are we building a healthy society by doing this or not? Little bit. As I said, I'm repeating this again, I wouldn't want to put the burden of fixing the society on entertainment industry. But still, like you said, there should be some, conscious… Yeah. Some sense should be there about it. Yeah. Okay. At least, I, I don't know what opportunity will come my way, but at least I try to… Let me try to choose the work. The at least way. you died in the movie. Yeah, <laughs> at least there I died in the movie. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I tweak my eyes so much for this ride okay. that even in the night, till night I am riding and riding the glasses. Wouldn't it be very dark with the glasses on and in the night? That's what I am saying. This is a hard for people to understand and people will think it's something When I was a child, I walked through the forest without any light or thought. I always wonder as a little boy, how come the animals can walk and I cannot? <laughs> so I paid attention, paid attention, paid attention to everything in such a way. Okay. If you pay enough attention without unprejudiced attention, see the problem with human beings is, now uh, if I am a man, I see a young woman, I pay attention to you, but uh, another young man is going, I ignore. See, this is not the nature of attention. Attention is like light. The light is on, you are young, old man, woman, whether you are an ant or an elephant, it lights up. Yeah. That's how your attention should be. That it just lights up what is there. Mm -hmm. You don't make it prejudice, it'll only light up this one, mm -hmm. not light up that one. Once you do that, this is what I mean by identity. Mm -hmm. Once you're identified, you cannot even see other things. You cannot even actually see the things that exist around you. Means so, you're not paying attention. Yeah, it's because your attention is prejudiced yeah. already, because you've taken an identity. Yeah. So, I went into the jungle and paid attention and attention. Then I always wondered why I can't see behind the tree, why I can't see behind the wall. I was just thinking, can I bend my vision so I can hear what's behind the tree, but I can't see. So I spent hours and hours and days just seeing if I can do this. <laughs> That's different, but as I paid attention, I learned how when I want to tweak my eyes, I tweak them up with a certain amount of energy, I see clearly in the night, even today, most of the time I don't turn on lights in my home, unless I want to read or something else. Mm -hmm. Normal walking around, I just walk around dark. dark. As it is, some little starlight, something may be there, but fine. So now I'm riding through the night with glasses on. The helmet visor has a tinted glass, just like this. Otherwise, I'm wearing this and riding. But the high beams from the opposite side would be… Uh, most of the thing. roads we've been driving have uh, medians, so okay. the high beams are not really okay. in your face. That's not the thing. You just have to see what's yeah. in front of you. So, now after I finish this in you know, another two days, hmm. I have to tone down my eyes because if I live like this, it will burn my eyes out. Yeah. Eyes out. If I can't live like this for too long, I will… No, 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 we need you. I'll, uh, I'll tone it down after some time. Okay, two days after this, you please <laughs> tone it down or whatever is needed. Then you'll see me without glasses. Yeah, please. I want to see the eyes also. We all want you to be here and see your eyes. So don't tone it down, Sadhguru. Um, okay, so I want I wanted to ask this that when it, when it come, came to rally for yours, we started with a missed call, then we started with the campaigns and awareness, and then we, after that the signature happened, the signing of the document happened. And then the, the things that happen, like, you know, farmers taking the plants in. So with respect to soil here, now that we have started in the 74 nations and 5-6 states here signed MOU, um, after this, like, there's a, there's, what next, what we can do, youth and everybody, what we can do, what is the next step? The, uh, right now, see, this is the whole thing. Okay. If we do not approach a certain activity, 
with the needed strategy. You'll just do things out of emotion and not achieve anything. Right now, the strategy is to keep the voices up, voices up, voices up, because if democratically elected governments have to act, they must know that people are totally on this. They should not fade off. Yes, if you… if you just quieten down, then they'll think, okay, something he did and now everything is okay, let's focus on something else, something else comes in, oh, every day there's some issue. Can't even blame them, every day there is some trouble, some issue going on in the country, so they're always focusing on those things. So we must keep the voice up. Once the incentive-based policy is done, then we'll get on the ground to talk to the farmers, how to make these incentives, how to benefit from that. But till then our duty is to talk about soil To keep the voice, to keep the conversation going about about soil yeah, yeah. because the government should understand that people really want it to happen. If you turn off your voice now and then say, okay, well, what happened, what happened, nothing will happen like that. We need to keep up your voice. So this should be up yep. so that they know it's real. So this is, you're not uh, this towards the end of no, the no, campaign. No, this is the beginning of much more, bigger plan. <laughs> yeah. And you're coming to Bangalore, the thing is that we have a lot of work. You said it yesterday. Yes. We have a lot of, lot of work. So, yeah, um, we will keep, we will do everything in our capacity for the soil not to die off, the safe soil to mm. be there. The uh, people are not really grasping this, few people are beginning to. Yes, yes, yes. The people are at the most thinking in terms of food security. Yes, which is also an important thing, it's a very important thing, I'm not questioning that. But there's something more fundamental. See, as I was saying, 60% of your body is microbial life. Mm -hmm. This is similar composition to that of the soil. Right. If the organic content or if the organisms start dropping down, like 27,000 species per year are going at the same rate. If it continues like this, when it goes into stumble, when the biodiversity starts collapsing, it will also collapse in your body. It's not because of lack of nourishment that you will collapse. You are very fundamental. The strength of the body will start crumbling down. Not like here you will fall apart, but you will see it becomes weaker, it becomes susceptible to so many things, even this coronavirus has a spell. See, if you ask any, not some great virologist, if you ask any uh, ordinary doctor, a simple doctor, he will tell you that in your nutrition, in your food, if there is not enough vitamin A, B6 and B12, D, C, C, D, calcium, uh, foliate, iron, zinc, copper, if these things are not there in your diet, you will become very susceptible to respiratory infection. One reason why a simple virus like that takes this kind of a toll on DNP is nutritional value of the food has gone down significantly. See, even in India you can see this, everywhere you can see this. See, how much it tortures the city people, how to what extent it affects the rural people, very different, isn't it? Because they are living a certain life where they pluck things and eat just like that. See, a simple thing, every day in the morning in your garden if there's a mango leaf, eat two or three tender leaves, your immunity will boom. Don't wash it. Simply eat it as it is. It will make a huge difference. So they are eating things like that, this whole Western thing for everything, wash your hands with soap, wash your hands with soap, now they are soaking you in alcohol. <laughs> Sanitizers, yeah, yeah. Too much, you want to live like a lab rat. Yeah. So people who are living in rural areas, they were not so seriously affected, only the very aged people got in. Others, uh, nobody… They treated it as fever and cold, yes. they came and That's went. It. Yeah. Yeah. The same could have been in uh, cities. If our nutrition value in the food that we are eating is much better, that can only happen by enhancing the soil quality. So right now people are predicting, the WHO is predicting and some agencies are predicting that, you know, in by… in another three or four years, there could be another pandemic which is far more severe than this. So in case it's coming or not coming, is it not important to keep your body in such a way, it stays with you as long as it should? And it's less affected actually, yep. it's not completely unnecessary. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not death, yeah. something else happens, it's okay, it will yeah. come and go, what is it? Yeah. Yes. Um, but unfortunately, you know, I'm feeling so...
Uh, what to say? Ignore. No. The virus is completely ignored. <laughs> Two and a half years. Nothing. <laughs> no. No, no, good, 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 good. Touch it. No, no, good. I think, I think the virus is like, who is this? Another competition for me. <laughs> hey, you calling me a virus? <laughs> no, like there's somebody who's stronger than me. Who's not letting me enter? Virus is not that strong, but they yeah, the is, body is. They just, just ignore me. Gotta be like you, Sadhguru. Gotta be like you. Thank you so much, Sadhguru. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sadhguru.